Okay, let's finish off question two. So it says the Leopard Trail Run is a two-day event run on the outskirts of the camp, starting and ending at the Cedar Falls home base. Okay, Annex B shows the map as well as the elevation map of, of the Leopard Trail Run in the Bavian's Cliff situated um, close to Willowmore. Okay, so here it is. Make sure that you look at looking at the right annexure. There's the route from like an aerial perspective, and then here's elevation. Remember, elevation basically means meters above sea level. Okay, so how much is it elevated from sea level? Then um visitors to the Bayvens Cliff or um can also do a four-day hike starting at the Cedar Falls home base. Okay, so day one of the trail run is day three and four of the hike. Day two of the trail run is day one and two of the hike. Okay, that's fine. So basically, if you're running, it takes two days. If you're hiking, it takes four days, which makes sense because hiking, you're walking and running, you are Kajima. Okay, so um, trail, just if you don't know what that means, it means a path through natural landscape. So generally, it's just not too smooth. So let's then look at the questions. So use Anna B and the answers above to um, answer the questions that follow. Write down the day during the run when you would pass Gabriel's Pools. Okay, so Gabriel's pool's over here, and it says day two, so it's pretty simple. We can just say day two, right? That was a pretty nice start to our question. So that is day two. Um, and it does say of the run, right? So just be careful there. It does say of the run, because obviously if it's the hike, it's different to the run, but here it did say the run. 2.2.2. The description of a part of the route of, on the brochure are as follows. The descriptions of a part. So you run for 5.5 kilometers above Rib, Rib Bok Valley, continue down the other side to the reflection pools for a swim and drinking water, then return to the home base. Choose the route described above and match it with A, B, C, or D. Write only the letter next to the question number. Okay, so I've written, let's write the question number here, 2.2.2. Oi, that looks like a seven. Okay, so let's just check. So it said, it's basically is here, right? This is the, the part that it's talking about. It's saying here, and then it's going, oh, wow, I did not trace that line well. Um, back to home base, right? So it's basically day two of the run, and it's the second half, right? Because you can see that the first half you go Gabriel's Pool, second half you do Reebok Valley. So let's see which one of the options we have is the most correct. So we already said it's day two, so we know it's not the first two options. So it's day two. But it's either part one or part two. Just from looking at the map, we can see that it's part two. So our answer is going to be D. Okay, so these things are often a process of just elimination, right? And logic. Just write D. You don't have to write any more than that. Then let's move on to our next question. Determine the number of kilometers John has run when he reached the highest point above sea level on day two. So now when we're talking about the highest point above sea level, we're talking about elevation. So let's go to day two. Okay, so we're not looking at this anymore. We're looking at the elevation. So it talks about day two and it says, um, determine the number of kilometers he has run when he reached the highest point. So the highest point is over here. Okay, and we can see that that was at 12,5, right? So that's pretty simple. Just have to read it off. So the big thing there is just making sure that you understand what information has been given to you and using the right map to give you the answer. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So let's do 2.2.4. So 2.2.4 is John's best average speed in kilometers per hour for the run, which is average speed from 8 kilometer mark up to the 18 kilometer mark on day one. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're on the right um, uh, graph when we look there. Use the elevation map to explain why this is the case. Okay, so here's day one. We're looking over here. And it said eight kilometers to 18. So here's eight and there's 18. Well, if you look at it, well, it's fabulous to run those sort of stretches because look, go, 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 downhill. Okay, when you run downhill, you're more likely to be going faster because gravity is with you and you can really move those legs quickly. So all you need to say over here is you can just say that part of the run has no uphills. 
right? Or you can say it's completely downhill, whatever you want to say, one of the two, and that will then give you your mark, okay? Let's do the last question here. John stated that on day two, while he was running from the 17,5 kilometer mark to the end of the trail, he had moved more than 100 meters closer to sea level. Show by means of a calculation whether or not he is correct. Okay, so we're on day two, so we know we're here. It said from 17.5, so he's over here, to the end. Okay, so he's running there. Right, so at 17.5, his elevation, go across here, was that. And at the end, it was 900, right? So we say, okay, well, what's the difference between the height at which he, he was at at 17,5 kilometers and the height he was at the end? And let's see whether what he said was true. So the height at, at 17,5 kilometers over there was 1,050. And the height at the end of the race was 900. Pop them in your calculator. And, oh, 150 meters. Okay, let's see what his claim was. Because remember, at the end of this, you have to say, is he correct or not? You can't just give me the calculation and be like, there you go. You need to give me a conclusion, right? So his, he said he had moved more than 100 kilometers close to sea level. Well, he'd moved actually 150 kilometers, which is more than 100. Therefore, he is correct. Okay, don't forget to put this in. You get a mark for that. Okay, as that's done, we can move now. Uh, we can now move on to question three.